Hello everyone and welcome to a little midweek watercolor project and this is just for fun and of course we'll learn at the same time right and so I was thinking more about um, a la prima which I have no idea if I'm using the word correctly but I see it I know it's an oil painting technique so it's hard to translate that into watercolor but I sort of see it as everything done all at once. So it's not like layers and layers and fine detail. It's more of a softer, more fluid, mixy, mingly kind of painting and without drawing um, in my mind. So that's what I mean when I say alla prima. I'm probably spelling it wrong. I'm probably using the word wrong, but that's what I mean. And I've done other videos here on Patreon about alla prima um, from my perspective. So you can check those out um, if you haven't seen them yet. So I uploaded a reference image and um, we don't need to paint the whole thing, but I, what I was really interested in, in is the rose. I loved it because number one, it's upside down, which makes our brains a little confused. And it has a beautiful shadow, which we're gonna use um, in our painting. So um, I think there's a lot of opportunity here for some lost and um, soft, you know, lost edges and hard edges. It's just lovely and some fun colors. So you, as always, you can use any paints, any colors you want. Um, I am going to use a size eight silver brush, black velvet pointed round. Um, any size eight or six pointed round is fine. Even um, my beloved... Uh, squirrel mop would be fine and then I just chose some paints um, by Julia Callen because I have a lovely selection of pinks pinks to reds and also beautiful grays and silvers for the shadow um, you could also use ink for the shadow if you wanted to a lot of times when I paint a la prima I'll use um, uh, Chinese ink for my shadows. I'm just really diluted because I love the way it looks and the way it sort of granulates and separates. Um, so that's possible too. Let me show you what that looks like because maybe we'll use it. <clears throat> Let's see. Let me... So the ink that I use is by Winsor & Newton. It's called Liquid India Ink, Indian Ink, and it's non-waterproof. It has a dragon on it. And I have several boxes in reserve <laughs> because I love this ink. I use it a lot. And what I like about it is that when you add water to it and wash it out, it separates into all these beautiful little granules. Um, so maybe we'll use that. We'll see. Um, and I'm going to start. I'm going to clean off my palette here. Um, so those nice, beautiful pinks aren't sullied in the beginning. And yes, I do just use my tin palette all the time. I just, you know, I have plates too. It depends on what paints I'm using, right? So um, I just clean it off when I need to. And sometimes if it's not a project where I want really clear colors in the beginning, I leave what's on here and I just mix it all in. It just sort of mutes everything, which I like. So I have that. I have my reference image. And I'm just going to be using um, Arteza paper. And this is their expert level paper. It's really affordable. Um, 14 sheets, 9 by 12. It's 140 pounds and 100% cotton. Is it my favorite paper? Not at all. Um, but it's great. And um, it has a texture that I'm not crazy about, but it's not bad. So I'm just going to take a piece of that out. And I'm going to cut it in half. And when I say cut it in half, I don't cut my paper, I tear my paper. And so what I end up doing is I put a little mark on the corner so I know what the right side is. And then I fold it in half. And then I use something um, that's not gonna mark the paper to just sort of score it on the edge. So like a clear jelly jar or something like that. A bone folder is fine, a, a nice stone. But just so I get a nice crisp edge and then I just sort of work it back and forth and hold it down and I tear the paper. I do that because I like the edges better than cut 
And <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm terrible with scissors. So if I try to cut something, there is never a straight line. So this size paper, half of a nine by 12 sheet is just a little bit bigger. Um, I'm sorry, longer and a little bit narrower than, than the image when I printed it out on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna do the rows, okay? And we're not going to draw it, we're just going to paint it. And we're gonna paint it um, by only painting the shapes and, and values that we see, okay? So in that way, it doesn't matter what color we use, even if, you know, we use, so if I'm gonna use pinks, um, I know that to make these pinks darker, I'm gonna add in some, some green, right? to make it darker. Um, and for the greens, I'm just gonna use greens I have in my palette, but you could also mix greens, okay, from, from your split primaries. So whatever you're going to do, just mix up some greens or choose the greens in your palette. I have several here to choose from. And then choose the color of, the main color of your flower, and then think about its complement. All right, so what is the opposite? So if you were gonna paint your rose red, the opposite would also be green. Mine's gonna be sort of a green blue. And I'm gonna wet my paints because that way they're all ready for me when I'm ready. And we're just gonna start. All right, so I'm gonna have my reference nearby and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it so it's very small. And if you want to end up painting the rest of this image, that's great. Do it. It's going to be um, the same principles that we use to paint the rose, and you can just try the other objects if you want to. All right, and we're going to do it upside down because that just that just um, makes our brain a little bit more incapable, right? <laughs> we want to turn our brains off and use our, our eyes. So I'm gonna start by looking at the lightest value that I see here, all right? And that's just sort of this pearly pink. And I'm gonna choose this one. And um, actually, no, I lied. I'm gonna choose this one because I don't want sparkle in it so much. And I'm gonna really water it down. So my pink, this is a little bit more purple, more magenta than the pink in my rose. And so I can mute that out by just adding a little touch of green to it. So I'm gonna just put a tiny touch of green just to mute it out a little bit. I don't like things terribly bright, okay? I can also add in a tiny touch of yellow to warm it up a little bit if I want to. So that's more like it. That's kind of the color that I wanna use, all right? And I'm gonna start by just painting the shape of the flower. And I'm gonna figure out where I want it on my page. So I think I'm gonna put mine right about here. So it looks like it's sort of in this corner. And I'm gonna start by painting the petal shapes that I see. I'm starting with this one, okay? And I'm just painting the whole petal shape. And I'll get quiet when I'm doing this because I'm trying to concentrate, right? Now, is it going to be perfect? Probably not. <laughs> I'm not drawing it. I'm just painting it. I'm painting the shapes that I see. So I've got that one down. I'm going to move over here. And by painting this light area first, that allows me to go in later. with some darker colors, right? Now I'm gonna go for the one behind. I can just put it up as close to it as possible, just leaving a tiny bit of space there. Just filling it in and I'm I'm using my brush in direction of form, even though I'm not really painting details or anything like that. I, it's just good practice. Kind of 
kind of got this shape here. And I can already see where I'm off a little bit. So I can adjust it. And if you're off a little bit, it's okay. It's going to work out. That's the wonderful thing about this kind of painting. It's just, you know, it's just okay if it's not exactly right because we're not trying to make a carbon copy of this flower. We're trying to capture the essence of it in a quick little painting. Now I'm going to paint this one. It kind of comes out like that. So you can watch. I'm not, you know, not being overly careful, but I'm trying to be true. So I can see that this part has come out a little bit farther, and that's okay. Okay. And if I've got any extra paint, I just wipe it away. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And there's this little piece in here. I just wanna make sure it's there. All right, it's not perfect, but I'm really happy with it, okay? So I'm gonna rinse my brush and dry it off. And then wherever I see it really light, I'm just gonna run my brush through it and just lift up a little bit of color here and there if I feel I need to. And it may not take a lot out, but I can just create some highlights that way. So I'm just using a dried, a dried off brush that's clean and running it over the painting where I see it a little bit lighter in places. And remember, we're going to add darker colors in. So even if you're unsure of this part, just leave it. You don't have to worry about it. But you see, by just using a dried off brush just to lift off a little color, I kind of create some, some depth immediately. All right. And now, um, while this is setting, I'm going to use some green. So let's pick up some green. I'm going to use this green. And I'll add a little bit of yellow to it. Maybe a little blue. So I've got kind of a dark bluish green. And then maybe I'll use um, a little bit of this green on the side that's a little bit brighter in this one. It's a little bit of a brighter green. That has some sparkles in it, but I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna start with a lighter green, and it doesn't matter if this is still wet. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna paint anyways, because you know what? If it runs together, so what? It'll be beautiful. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna paint a stem. I'm having a shaky hand day, by the way. Pick up a little more. You 
and just paint the suggestion of that leaf. So pretty. And then mix in with my little bit of darker green and I'm going to pull and just add in the sepals where I see them. And then I see one over on this side. So I'm going to turn my paper a little bit. It's going to be a little bit different. Okay, so I've got the start of these sepals. And I can add more layers onto these, all right? That's going to be sort of hidden underneath that petal because mine was a little bit off there. All right. I can pick up some of my darker color, my darker green, and drop it in to the wet paint where I see it a little bit darker. Definitely up in here, along this side. Just to give it a little bit of variation. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my rosy color and I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. And remember I added in a touch of green. So I could even use the green from here now just to mute it out a little bit. And I'm gonna add some yellow to it to warm it up. So my colors are not exactly like this and that's fine. And I'm going to paint where I see it a little bit darker. I'm going to start up here. And I see um, over here on this side, there's a little bit in here. And there's a little bit down in here where... You can see that. Um, and then there's a little bit of light... There. And then if it feels like it's soft, then I can just take a clean brush and push into it. Okay. And then this part is a little bit darker. Soften. Here. Soften. So you see how I'm just going around and looking at my reference. And I want to soften. I rinse my brush, dry it off, and push into the darker paint, right? And over here, I've got a little triangle shape. Rinse my brush, dry it off, and then just push into it just to soften those edges a little bit. And then over here, I've got some darkness down underneath. And then the edge of this petal is dark. And then down here by my leaf, it's very dark. And you know what? If it, if it bleeds together, I'm okay with that. The 
just a little bit of light and then it gets darker again. Rinse my brush and push into it with a clean, damp brush to soften, okay? And I feel like I wanna soften this a little more so I can just push into it, clean my brush, dry it off, and soften. This feels like it needs to be a little darker, so I'm gonna go back in there. There. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my dark green, and I'm just gonna add a little bit here and there. Just to darken that up. Let it bleed together. It's a, it takes practice, right? You'll learn like how much how much paint to put down. If it bleeds too much, you know. I'm gonna make up a little bit more of my red, add some of my green to it to make it as dark as I can. All right, even more green to get it quite a bit darker. And because this is a shadow, I'm gonna leave it. I'm not, I don't need to add yellow in so much. And I'm gonna just put in a little bit more where I see the very darkest places. I need to soften, I rinse my brush, dry it off. With my brush tip toward the darker paint, I can pull it through. Rinse my brush, dry it off. A little bit more right in here right here a little bit down here just to add a little bit of depth to it now now I want to put my shadow in okay and I think you know what else I want to do let me add a little bit more Right in here, see this edge isn't showing very much, so. Rinse my brush, dry it off. Just keep rinsing and drying off if I wanna soften and push. I like that color, so I'm gonna add a little bit of that in here. And in here, in here, I'm not really happy with this line. So if I rinse my brush and dry it off, I can soften that too. Just push it in there. There, that's great. Okay, uh, maybe a little bit more. Right up in here. Okay. All right, so now let's think about our shadow. While, you know, we don't want to wait until it's completely dry because maybe some of it will bleed into the shadow and that will look really beautiful. Um, I'm going to go ahead, let's see. Yes, I could do that. Um, let me grab a container. to clean it out. It's dusty. Um, you know, that might actually stain that, so I'll use this. So I'm just going to put some water 
to spray some water into this container because I want this to be very dilute. So whether you're using ink or you're using black watercolor, you wanna start with a lot of water. And watch me not be able to, get, I can't get it open. Oh, okay. And I'm just gonna put the tiniest little bit in there and then rinse my brush really well and mix it up. And then I can add a little bit more if I want to. I wanna start with very little. That's pretty good, I think. So we want a very diluted black or gray or shadow color. All right. I have a tissue in my hand if I need it. And I'm going to start with water and just, uh, actually I'll start with a color. You can start with a color. And the shadow kind of goes around the edge and it just sort of comes out this way. And I'm going to push water into it and then dry my brush off and soften the edge. With my with my towel and I can also lightly blot it. I want my shadows to be just really loose and watercolory. There's a big shadow under here so I'm going to push that color right up to the rose. I'm not worried about going over the paint. It's right in here. And it kind of comes down over the leaf and down into this area. Push some water into it, rinse my brush, dry it off. Soften. Push water into it. Use my tissue to, to pick up any, any hard edges, okay? And then I can soften again by just pushing water into it. All right, so it's just sort of ethereal, right? I can pick up any areas with my tissue that I don't feel are right, but I keep pushing water into it. And then where it's a little bit darker, I can drop in some more and let it just float and move on the water. Keeping an eye on it, pushing it, away from where I want it lighter. This is a really fluid process. It's not something um, that, you, that we stress over. We let it be what it is. And then this is kind of hard down here, so I can dab it a little bit and then push some water into it. I like it. Now I'm going to lift up right in this area because I don't see as much shadow there. It just sort of blends out. And then I can again soften with my edge, soften with my brush. And then right over here I can lift up a little bit. Very, very um, free. And that's what this project is meant to be. It's meant just to be a quick little thing that you do just for fun, to be sort of free and not worry so much about perfection, right? <laughs> and I can even take a little bit more and drop it in to the darkest part. Just play with it. I can even, because this part of my rose is a little bit muted, I can pull it up there underneath where that white petal is. Okay. Now, if there's anywhere that I feel needs to be crisper on my flower, I can add that in. But I like it just the way it is.
And here's a little thing sometimes I do. Maybe the rose um, bleeds off into the paper. So I can just put a little bit of color and it bleeds off into the shadow. If I drop some, then I can just let it go. There. All right, so that's basically the project. It's gonna turn out different for each of you. I can, and as long as my shadow's still wet, I can manipulate, which is kind of fun. But I think I'm gonna leave it alone. I really like it the way it is. Okay, so very simple, very quick. Try it. Try it with this reference, and then if you want to continue and try it with the other parts of this, that's fine. Be really loose and free with your shadow. Either use black watercolor or ink. You could use either one. And I even think I'm gonna take a little bit of green and just drop some green. Right down here where it's really dark. Oh, it's just not wet enough, sorry. Let the green kind of flow into the shadow too. Maybe even a little bit in here. Feels like it wants that, right? Okay. All right. There we have it. A quick little a la prima rose. A la prima a la kateri. <laughs> All right. And as you can see, this is not an exact copy, right? But if I take this away, isn't it pretty? Right? That's what we're looking for. So before we leave, I wanted to show you something. Um, I was reading a book this morning. And it reminded me that I've been wanting to show you these books um, for many reasons. But there's an author that I love. Her name is Gunilla Norris. And um, I'll read you what it says about her. Which one of these books has a little thing about her? Um, nope. Gunilla Norris is a well-known writer, meditation teacher, and psychotherapist in private practice. She is the author of the spiritual classics, Being Home and Becoming Bread. She lives in Mystic, Connecticut. And I found her when I was visiting monasteries a lot. For a long time, when I was living alone, I did my vacationing at monasteries. Um, I felt very safe there. I loved, I loved praying the hours, the divine hour, the divine office. With the monks. Um, I would even get up at 2 in the morning and 4.30 in the morning um, to pray, to chant the, um, the psalms with them. Um, I love it. It's very special to me. And I learned about Gunilla during that time, so it's quite a long time ago. And I did this for years, but um, she is beloved by people of all faiths that are um, spiritual people. And um, I would say it has a Christian flavor, but um, it's certainly um, available to any person of faith or even of no faith um, because she brings the spiritual into your everyday life with these beautiful books. And this one is one of my favorites. It's called Becoming Bread. And each chapter has these beautiful drawings. And then just these simple, they're not really poems, but they're beautiful. And then it ends by giving you a recipe for bread and how to make it in a very intuitive way. Um, but throughout the, the, throughout the book, there are these lovely, lovely drawings. They're very inspiring to me. The colors of the drawings are beautiful. A lot of them are pen and ink. Um, I just, I love them. This one, the, the drawings are very much the same throughout, like wheat and bread and bowls and things like that loaf pans but they're lovely and they're they're really fun things to maybe just randomly open book and say oh if you don't have anything to draw you could say oh i'll practice drawing these today right and you could do it in pen and ink or you could do it in watercolor um this one is called inviting silence universal principles of meditation 
this was such an influential book for me. I loved it. And again, um, just beautiful short things to read. So it's not like you have to bite off a lot. You can just open it and read one thing for some inspiration and nourishment to your spirit. It talks a lot about silence. And then this one is a mystic garden, working with soil, attending to soul. Um, so it's, it's about gardening. And again, has beautiful line drawings in it. And so you could use these as inspiration points. So not only the words, but also the images. I mean, what a beautiful line drawing of pine that you could easily try to replicate, right? So I just wanted to share them with you because I love them. I love that when, um, from Sister Teresa Spittle, DHS, August 29th, 2015, at um, Sister Michael's. <laughs> um, so I, I buy them used, obviously, but um, I just love them, and I wanted to share them with you. This one's called Being Home. I have two others, too. Um, I, every time she has a new book, I, I collect them. Um, Being Home is about the spiritual and the every day, and she talks about um, the basic things that we do in our everyday lives and how to put more presence and... Um, reverence into them. It's just um, really beautiful. So I thought I would share these with you. There might be something um, that you like in them. And they're all, they like this one, I mean, I've had this a long time. This one's 1991. So it is very, very easy to find them used. And I suggest, um, I suggest that because it's just, it's wonderful to get used books. This one's to the housekeeping spirit, right? We all have to do housekeeping. So why not make it a more spiritual experience for ourselves, right? So I just want to share those with you. Gunilla Norris. She's just, I love her. And then look at our rose now as it's starting to settle. Isn't that gorgeous? Right? Not a copy of, not an exact copy of this, the essence of it, right? All right, everybody, I hope you try this. I'd love to see your work. Any questions, please ask, and I will see you Friday with a dandelion lesson. Take care.